Hey, Eric Faust here from Camper Tech. Today we have a nefarious forecast coming in. Uh, obviously, as many of you know, I've been staying in my camper quite a bit uh, during the winter, several nights a week, and uh, been comfortable and having no problems at all. I've camped in it down to 18 degrees, no problems. But uh, with the forecast coming in tonight, we're supposed to have some snow and then followed by bitter cold temperatures down near zero and wind temperatures well below zero. Being that I don't have this skirted, yeah, I know, I'm lazy. Uh, I'm going to re-winterize it. So without further ado, we're gonna do some winterization. Now the first step in winterization is obviously to drain your camper. You want to make sure that all water sources are shut off, which I did. And so now, upon draining the camper, the, the very first thing that you want to drain is your water heater. Before you drain your water heater, you want to make sure that it is off. So I'm going to shut this, see this little switch right here? I'm going to turn it to off. Now those of you who have gas fired only, you'll shut it off on the inside. So here's here's the water heater right here, right? So if you have gas, you're gonna have that on. Well, you shut that off, and so you're good to go. And we'll be up to this panel here in just a minute. Okay, so we need to drain this water heater, and, and you've gotta be careful because these are hot. This water is scolding hot. So unless you let it cool down, you know, overnight or whatever, but I'm doing this right now, so this little plug right here you'll either have a nylon plug on depending on what kind of water heater you have if you have a stainless steel interior water heater it's going to be a nylon plug with this one it's not so it's got uh, this plug is an anode rod and i'm going to slowly take this out you want a 1 and 16th inch uh, well actually a 1 and 16th inch socket now being that i loaned my socket out and it was never returned i had to resort to this wrench which works perfectly fine and i'm going to start draining my anode rod now you want to stand back a little bit because the water can gush out now i'm not too bad because i made sure that my uh, faucets were open on the inside again so now it's going to come out now one thing i want to talk to you about is this anode rod look at that i need a new anode rod these things are designed to be self-sacrificing so what the anode rod does is it sacrifices itself so that the inside of your water heater won't sacrifice itself and rot through. It's called a sacrificial metal. Uh, they started this with outboard motors on boats. They found that if they used a piece of magnesium and put it on the fin of an outboard motor that the rest of the motor wouldn't corrode. This is the same way. These are cheap. I'm going to go buy one uh, later today and then put it back in in a couple days when I decide to run regular water through it so now that the water's draining out again i'm just going to set that right there now that the water's draining out i can take this pressure relief valve put a little air to it and really let it drain see that so it's all running out so while that's draining we're going to go to the low point okay typically your low points look just like this uh, underneath my camper, unfortunately, they're in the center. Okay, as you can see, I'm starting to, I'm loosening my drain plugs. This is, this is obviously the cold water lines in the whole camper. Again, you want to drain your low point drains. If you don't, that water is going to be sitting in the unit and the antifreeze isn't going to do any good. And the water can freeze and expand and crack your, and break your joints. And that could be a very expensive repair. So we're going to go ahead and let this drain out. There we go. That's one. Now we're gonna, the red is always hot. So we're gonna let the hot water drain out too. See, there's not a lot of water in there. There's just enough in the lines. But again, it's important to drain these. Put these, put these caps back on after your unit is drained because if you don't, you're going to be pumping antifreeze out through it and it's just going to come out of the bottom. So always remember to put these caps on and keep them tight. You're good till next year. 
Okay, now that we're inside, we're ready to start running the antifreeze through the lines, and thus this will be fully winterized. This is the antifreeze you can get at Walmart, uh, off of Amazon. I tell you what, it's cheap. Uh, I buy usually about 10 gallons at a time, keep it on hand. It's cheap, it's easy, and RV antifreeze is potable, meaning that if you did ingest it, it's not going to kill you. I wouldn't advise toting on a jug or anything like that, but you'll be all right. I mean, you know, in other words, when you open back up in the spring, you know, you may get a little taste in your water of this stuff, you know, until the lines are completely flushed out. It's not going to hurt you. Now, before we start running the antifreeze through, the one thing we need to do is to bypass the water heater. And that's why I drained it, because we're going to bypass it. Now, I suppose if you didn't want to, you wouldn't have to, but you would be filling that up with six gallons of antifreeze. Who wants to waste all that money and waste all that time when it can be simply bypassed? To bypass this, what I do is I turn on this particular model. Some of them are just one valve. This is two valves. I've seen others that are three valves. So you turn it 90 degrees to where it was. And again, if you can see that right up there, it's going to be 90 degrees to where it was okay see that now now what it's going to do is the, the antifreeze that is pumped into the system via this hose it's going to come in and it's going to go through the, wa the cold water line that feeds out through the rest of the camper and it's going to go up through here and feed into the wa hot water line in other words thus bypassing the water heater so the water comes in it's going to split off both ways from here. Again, go up through the hot, go up through the cold. Antifreeze will be flushed through the whole system. And it'll be, come on, get focused here. And everything will be protected against this cold snap. So this antifreeze is good down to 50 below. So I think we're going to be safe. And again, uh, as I stated in an earlier video, this is an easy water pump or water heater to get to. Uh, control box is right here. I can reach from it from any vantage point if it ever goes bad and replace it. If I needed to replace the whole water heater, no big deal. It comes right out. Okay, before we run, run the antifreeze, what you want to do is turn on your water pump. Remember, all campers have a water pump in case you boondock camp and you have to draw off your fresh water tank. Well, we've bypassed that, and the makers of this camper ingeniously put a draw hose that we're going to get to in just a second. So my water pump is on. We're ready to go. Okay, here's the water pump, and this is the draw hose that I was talking about. And I'm going to stick it right down in here. And we're just going to draw right directly out. And there, you've got to remember... You've got to remember that on your water pump, you also have, a lot of them will have this little valve right here that you need to make sure that it's going to open up and let the antifreeze go in so it can pump it out throughout the system. So remember this valve. This is set up and ready to go. So in an RV, you want to start at your furthest water point first. So we're going to go to the bathroom. Okay, now... Uh, there's going to be a little bit of fresh water in the system that the low point drains didn't get. And so you're going to run that out, and it's going to be followed by the antifreeze. The pump's working. This is normal. But again, it's, it's pulling up, and you want to pump, you want to leave this water on until you see it turn pink. It's turning just a little bit pink now. It takes a while. It's got to feed all the way through. It's a long camper, so... You gotta be patient. And here we go. We have pink coming through the cold water, so that's good and winterized. Turn on the hot water, do the same thing. It's gonna take a little bit of time because it's gotta work all the way through the lines. There we go, we're getting all the air bled out. 
And we have paint coming through there. Good deal. Now to the shower. I keep this bucket here. Just, you know, so I can continue to wash my hands if I want to camp in here. And uh, also flush the toilet. So we're going to turn on the shower. All right. And this, this pink is non-staining. It's not going to hurt anything for it to stay into your, you know, it can stay and pool in your, the basin of your shower. Okay, see that pink coming in right there? That means it's good to go. See that right there? Okay, awesome. All right, so we're going to shut the, wa the cold water off. We're going to turn the hot water on. And once again, here we go. Now it's gonna it's gonna spit a little bit, it's gonna turn white or clear, and it's gonna start turning pink again. There we go, that's what we want to see. That's exactly what we want. So now the shower's all done. Again, you can leave that there. That's not gonna stain, that's not gonna hurt anything. I leave it there all winter, or I have in years past. But again, in two days when I bring everything back online, I'll, I'll rinse it down. And the toilet. See, it's kind of spurting and spitting a little bit when you get a solid stream of pink. That's when you know you're good winterized. There we go. And plus that going down your drain, that protects your drains from freezing too. Okay, we're good to go there. This is winterized. Now to the kitchen. And again, we're gonna do cold water. Well, that was instant. Okay, that's what we want. Now we're gonna do hot water. There we go, we're good and protected. Now I have used almost two gallons to do this whole camper. And I've got one more source that many of you are gonna forget about or have forgotten about. And that's my outside shower. And the same goes for you if you have an outside kitchen. It's going outside. Okay, again, the, the much neglected outside shower. A lot of people don't do this or they forget to. Again, turn it on. Cold water first. Kind of hard to see, so I'll just do the neighbor's camper. All right, that's good and ready to go. Now for the hot water. Look at that, that's good and ready to go. there put everything back okay this camper is 100 percent winterized in other words there's antifreeze going all through the whole system the lines and the drains the shower outlets the faucet outlets the toilet they're all protected down to 50 below if it goes below that you know hey you're in the wrong place so i can still camp in this camper I mean, there's no problem. It's nice and warm in here. Again, I'm worried about the single digit temperatures with the, uh, you know, with the wind chills that are supposed to be minus 17. I'm not going to take a chance. Could I have gotten by? Yeah, probably. But you know what? Again, antifreeze is cheap. And that took us, what, about a uh, half hour to do at the very most? Hey, it doesn't take long to winterize these things. I, I pre-filled that five gallon bucket of water. So if I wanted to use the toilet, you can, and you can. It's not going to hurt anything if anything freezes in there because, you know, it's a it, it's a it's a 40 gallon tank. You're not going to fill it up with 40 gallons and worry about expansion. So I've got that to flush the toilet. I uh, carry, uh, you know, I carry uh, wet wipes and Clorox wipes and stuff like that with me to wash my hands and my face. And uh, I also have um, several cases of water and uh, drinkable water obviously bottled water and so really i could be set up for a good week in this with no problem i could still maintain my hygiene i can still make coffee i can still drink stuff no problem 
uh, but I just can't take a shower or anything like that. But uh, again, this cold snap's going to be over within a couple days. I'll be back to regular water. Everything will be good. So again, do yourself a favor and winterize your camper, even if you use it in the winter, on the real cold days. If you don't have it skirted and you worry just a little bit, it's best to play it safe because, again, a $4, $5 jug of antifreeze is a heck of a lot cheaper than several thousand dollars worth of plumbing lines that you might have to replace if you neglect to do so. So, again, this is Eric Faust, Camper Tech. Thanks for hanging with me, and let's get back to work.